guys, today we're here with Jem. Um, Jem's our model for today. Um, she's come in today and she's spoken to me about introducing a fringe into a haircut. So though she's come in with her hair up today, um, it's actually almost all one length. So it's very popular at the moment. You see Bella Hadid actually has quite a strong bang at the moment. Um, and various other celebrities have uh, variations of quite strong and choppy bangs. So um, that's going to be the focal point of the haircut today. Um, but we are going to introduce some layering and sort of make it a little bit loose and, and, and flow a little bit um, softer for summer rather than being quite strong and solid on the end. So um, I guess what you'll get out of this from me today is how I perform and execute and section for that arm fringe or bang as you guys probably refer to it. So we're going to get started if you're yep. ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Cool. And we'll see you soon. It's on my phone. <laughs> Tell me, baby, what we gonna do? Chillin' sippin' on the L O V E U. I ain't playing no game, baby, watching you. So something that's really important when we're thinking about introducing a fringe or bangs into someone's haircut is to have a look around the hairline and try and identify any sort of growth patterns that might give you some grief. You don't want to have, you know, a situation where you've got quite a strong cowlick or something in the front and it ends up you know, not sitting right and not sitting flat. The other thing to keep in mind is the length of the forehead or the size of the forehead, because if the forehead's quite short, it can sometimes be a problem to cut a bang in because the hair um, doesn't have enough weight in it to travel to keep it flat. But I think Jem's got quite a nice balanced forehead for this, so hopefully it'll work quite well. Um, and then the other thing to consider is the depth of the fringe, so how far back you want to take it. Um, and then again, that depends on, on how strong you want it to be. I'm often asked, asked um, where do you part the hair for a, for a, for a bang or a fringe. Um, I guess um, you just want to make sure you've got a nice even distribution of hair. So I'd say anywhere on the left or right, but either in the centre or just to the left or right of centre. If you would want to have a side part and a bang, you can do it, but it becomes quite difficult because you end up trying to create a balance with like hair in the in the bang all the way here, and then only this much on the other side or vice versa. So distribution is something pretty important. Um, with Jem, I'm just gonna work with the natural parting because I think it's uh, always best to, to work with natural parting. So we'll see how this goes. So you can see I'm just working through the hair, just combing through. I just want to um, just want to see how the hair falls when it's pushed in different directions because, as you guys obviously you're cutting hair already, as you, you're well aware. As soon as we remove length off that front, obviously it gets lighter. When you remove the weight, any like movement in that hairline is only going to be accentuated by removing the removing the um, length, and you just don't want to end up with something that's not going to sit flat. I think that's going to be good out there. The other thing I always say is try not to take it as far as the temples because you, you don't really want to be bringing hair into the into the fringe from the temple that can just make transitioning out of a fringe later on really really hard I think it's something really important to note that when you you're making changes in people's hair you should you should put thought into what, what you're gonna do next time and what happens if they say hey Adam I want to grow my my bang out you're like ah oh, well, I sort of cut around half the side of your head, so that's going to take a few months. So it's really important to make sure you think about those factors as well. I think that's good. Let me just check. Okay, so with Gems Bang, what I'm going to do is First we're going to just layer it a little bit just to remove some length. So I'm going to lift it all in at once. Head up, 
gorgeous. Thank you. And you might want to close your eyes for this bit. Because it's a bit scary. No, I'm joking. You don't want to get here nah. in the I always like to leave a little bit of length first and then what we're going to do, we're just going to dry it, make sure the fringe is right and then we'll go on to do the rest of the haircut. So with Gem, I'm gonna aim for just just above the eyebrows because we had a chat about wanting to make it look a little bit sort of edgy. that um, temple hairline hair I was talking about. Make sure you leave that out. Just be around and have a look. Ooh. Maybe half a centimetre shorter. I love it already. Looks good, huh? Yeah. It's pretty new. You can see the spring, the spring in that hair when you let it go, like you need to be really super careful.
good. <laughs> really good. I think we might take the sides off a little. We'll see how it works in the rest first. All right. Alright, so Gem and I discussed making a, a change in the length, but as I said before, this is more about the bang and making sure that that's sort of going to be our focal point. So we are going to, we are going to take some length off, but um, this is like I said, more about introducing some layering um, and sort of trying to loosen the whole hair cut up a little bit. And then just at the very end, I'll probably adjust the length, but we're going to start with the, with the layering first. Some, something I've been doing a lot is just taking a little bit of that excess moisture out of the hair before I start and I do this just so I can see and identify any natural movement that's in the hair. So you're going to be able to get those little, a cute little, you can wear it like parted. I was discussing with Jamie, guys, you didn't see off camera, but we're talking about making it quirky, like you can actually wear it sort of parted, you can fringe it part, like have your fringe straight, but then wear it parted and have the rest kind of beachy and fun. So, um, yeah, that's why I wanted to, we spoke about, Jem was wanting to maybe leave it slightly longer, but I explained to her that just gives it that more modern edgy feel just by making that a little bit shorter. So we'll get into the back. As you guys have seen me probably in the past, we want to make sure that when we're in the back, we're trying to also identify growth patterns before we start creating layers. And I like to make sure that the crown is well and truly discovered and you understand how it's going to fall because I'll spin Gem around this way so you can see. Just pop your head back a bit, darling. This hair is growing forward. You can see that. If I try and if I put it, get the parting wrong when I section the back, and that's going in the back, that'll cause a lot of problems when you draw it. You're going to get like a weight line. It'll sit up. Um, nasty. Really, ma really make sure you find where that um, cowlick or crown or any sort of growth pattern is, and try and really work with it rather than against it.
take a nice little rectangular section on top. The purpose of this is for me to set myself a marker for the layering. Bring everything to that point first. Sometimes when you cut partially hide partially dried hair I'm sorry you can um, can sometimes be a little bit more difficult to comb and to work with but um, like I said I do it so that I can identify any movement or curl or wave that might occur naturally in the hair as it's starting to dry and really hone in on that and try and work with it right so that's the, the marker in the back done so probably notice the first part I use this comb and I'm going to swap to this one and you're going to see why because um, I'm actually going to try and section and hold the whole plane of hair at once so I find long combs are really really good for that so I'm going to spin Gem around this way so you can see shape making sure you work within the head shape I don't wanna I wanna do this one make sure you bring it straight back down just a bit though. Thank you. So make sure we've got those corners, so check them square again, and same on the other side.
All right, Jim. Yes, sir. So this is sort of similar to a haircut I've done, but uh, previously. But what's going to make this what makes this really really different is I'm going to share a quite a cool um, texturizing technique with you guys. So that really really sets his hair cut off. I was right about the length of the fringe. Yeah. See, just that does something neat. It might even need to be just a tiny bit shorter. Something about seeing your eyebrows mm -hmm. with the fringe on the I face. Like I, like I think it's really important that when we um, put any new element into the hair, we consider people's face shapes, features, obviously. And I think um, the conversation needs to be had with the the client about you know what maybe we should do it that little bit shorter so we can see your eyebrows because I think it I think it makes a a big difference to the, mm -hmm. the face shape. It also means we don't have to trim your fridge for you as often. No, I'm joking. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's short. No. You can come and have a fringe trim whenever you want. But you're starting to get a little bit knotty. You guys didn't see but Jem came in um, well, about four hours ago, five hours ago, and um, she had um, basically bleached white hair on the end, which is why it's sort of quite hard for me to comb through the ends, but um, you can see here it's really beautiful and silky, and then we get to there and it's, that, it's gritty and that's that, that really damaged bleach hair that's coming off as we comb through, but the colour's great. It actually was... Um, where are you from, Jemmy? From Philippines, Philippines yeah? yeah. So Jem's from the Philippines. So her hair was obviously jet black, mm -hmm. um, and then she had bleached white ends. And um, Lara um, coloured back her ends, um, and we lifted her base colour out using the amazing Matrix Sew colour. And I believe, from memory, we did it with six. A and 9% and then I'm not quite sure what we filled in the ends with I'd have to ask Lara but obviously it's quite a good match so yeah, it's, really nice. it's beautiful you can really see that mm. nice warm hue through the top there Yeah, I just, um, yeah. just want to make sure I'm not being too aggressive and I also want to make sure I don't miss any. Alright, so I'll spin you around this way if you could. Just tilt your head forward a little bit. Just sit back and just head down and just give this a shake. Just so you guys can see what that layering does to the shape. So, just remember we haven't done anything on the perimeter yet. That was as it was. You see it's just really loosened it up, it's quite beautiful. So now we're just going to work on um, some really cool texturising. So I'm going to dry it off first. As always, the best. It smells so good. What's that? It smells so good. Yeah, it does smell nice. It's just such a... Uh, I just don't understand how... The, I mean, it's, it's a daily leave-in tonic, so obviously if they've they've considered that, Matrix have considered that when they make it, people are gonna use it often. But you can use lots of it, 
it really works well with the hair and it doesn't ever make it heavy. Yeah, Often get asked. Well, I don't. I try not to straighten the hair too much, so you can see I just use a nice flat brush, and um, it might smooth it a little at the end, but I don't use round brushes very much at all. The fun part. So first, I'm just going to go through and make sure my shapes correct and how it needs to be because we definitely do not fix um, definitely do not fix um, imperfections in your shape by texturizing here you make sure that the structure and the foundation is right first so we'll go through it and make sure any little pieces that I've nicked or missed We'll get them off and um, yeah, So I start with just taking a, let me just make that a little bit clearer for you guys. 
I'm going to trust the clips. So essentially with this haircut, we're going to use a horizontal sectioning pattern, similar to how I cut it. I'm going to start with one side at a time. Here. I'm going to do quite deep. This is not for, this is not texture to remove weight, this is texture to create movement. So we need to make sure that you're going quite deep and you're actually creating channels. And each section is projected parallel to your parting or 90 degrees until we run out of hair. Make sure this one's really over directed. Beautiful. So as I mentioned before, this haircut at the moment is being worn by a couple of celebrities. One of which is Bella Hadid. And um, a lot of celebrities now are wearing fringes and loosening up their haircuts. We went for a, a period there where everything was very solid and structured. And um, I believe form and structure is always the best starting point but now we're loosening it up with um, texture rather than classic dated layers I'll just grab it all at once just to make sure that the density is even I just like to have a look Side is the same. Sectioning horizontally. back to the top where we started. Love it.
cross checking through the middle again just making sure we're not texturizing to make the hair thin although you do remove weight we're texturizing and channeling to create separation and create movement Again, it's all, all free and loose. Don't want to put anything too structured back in there. But we are going to just clip those ends off with some clippers. And I do think we should make that fringe, as I said in my last video, a bee's dick shorter. Maybe we can just loosen it a little bit. Tiny smooth, a little smoother, just mainly because I want to chop these ends up a bit. Could you hold those for me, gorgeous? Thank you. I just look straight at the cheese. You guys have seen me do this plenty of times, it's just, just going to really, just for no other reason, just to create a little bit of structure. I'm not going to go too high, I'm just going to, still want to see some of that texture through the ends.
chill de arriba. Same again, please, in there. I just noticed when I was cutting Jem's hair then that this side underneath here just looked a little bit a little bit denser than the other side so I'll just quickly go back and adjust that. Recap. Um, started with the fringe, bangs, because um, for many reasons, I think that was the, the focal point of this haircut, and I think it looked really good. Then we just worked with some loose layers, kept the texture there. Have a look at the back. Really great texture in the back. Nice sort of choppy, really super textured look. I think it's great. Nice and loose. Yeah, the truck pull me pull back to good cheap ones. Real good. Cool. What do you reckon? Nice. I like it. Thanks, Jim. Oh, thank you. You're welcome, gorgeous. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, hope you like Jim's fringe and that nice textured look we did. Um, you can actually check 
gem out on one of our previous uh, videos. She was a model for us at Disc in the Disco Lux video. I think it's actually the trailer on the channel, so check it out. You can see it. She had really, really long hair and it was red. It was pretty amazing. So thanks for coming in today, and we'll see you guys again real soon. Watching you, 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 watching you